Attention, the following broadcast has been approved by Outcasted OC. Viewer discretion is advised. Incoming transmission in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of the NXT Review with Outcasted OC. I am Reese, back again a week before spring breaking. And it's a pretty decent episode of NXT this week, so let's just get straight into it. But um, make sure you like and follow before we start talking about this week's episode of NXT, if you enjoy this video. Uh, we got Dijak versus Noam Dar opening the show. This is one of those matches where I would never put these two together. But now that I've seen it, I kind of want to see more matches like this. Because you've got the kind of deny uh, the dynamic of Noam Dar, fast-paced, MMA style versus Dijak's... I mean, he's he's a big guy, but obviously he can move like a cruiserweight. So he's also got the power as well. So it's an interesting sort of... like pairing with these people and um, this came from last week when obviously Dijak found out that the metaphor was messing around in his like kind of judge area do you know what I'm talking about do you know where he, he serves justice that that time where he punished uh, Ilya Dragunov in that infamous segment where Ilya Dragunov was enjoying getting um getting get, getting punished that I, I, I don't I'm not I don't know if I'm allowed to say the other word <laughs> <laughs> that, he, that he was that was basically going on with him. It was kind of weird. But back to the match. Um, like I said, really solid match. This might be match of the night, and we've got a steel cage match in the main event. So this says a lot about how well this match went. Um, it comes to a head where Dijak is about to hit the feast your eyes onto Noam Dar when Aura Mensa jumps onto the side of the ring. He, um, he gets super kicked for his troubles by Dijak, but honestly. This is the nail in the coffin for Dijak. He turns around right into the Nova Roller. Noam Dar gets the 1-2-3 pin here. Um, I want to see another match between these two people. I thought it was absolutely amazing. I really did like the chemistry that Noam Dar and Dijak had. Really good. Both of these two guys are on a roll as well lately. So, I mean, literally one of them was hit the Nova Roller. So, they're both on a roll. Um, so, I was surprised that Dijak took the pin here, to be honest with you. Because I really thought he was going into the championship scene. Who knows? We'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to see what happens there. Um, backstage, we go to Ava telling that Ilya Dragunov um, has to have a match tonight because it's unfair that Trick Williams is having a match and he has the night off. Ilya Dragunov turns around and says, you know, you're the general manager, so you know you do what you've got to do. Um, but whoever comes face to face with me uh, will get a chance to prove himself against the Mad Dragon. Ava turns around and says, you get to pick your opponent tonight. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see who Ilya Dragunov picks tonight or who gets to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Tsar of NXT. Um, spoiler alert, really good match. I, I did not I did not see this coming whatsoever, to be honest with you. Um, next, we get a weird kind of like promo thing from Tate and Paxley. Like, I, d I don't know what this was, but she was, she was basically saying that she um, wanted to be friends with the popular girls. Um, she was friends with Lyra Valkyria, but not anymore. She doesn't like Val Lyra Valkyria anymore. She was only friends with Lyra because she liked the championship belt that she held, and she didn't really like her. And it's a bit of a flashback of what happened last week, where Tatum kind of turned on Lyra Valkyria and attacked her, um, saying that she's also coming for Roxanne Perez. She can't have her holding the NXT championship. So later on in the night, we get it confirmed that something is going to be happening at spring break and that I'm down for, so we'll discuss that in a little while. Next, we get Lola Vice versus Sol Ruka, um, a match where both of these people are two of my favorite uh, women's wrestlers in the company, especially in NXT. Both of them are so talented, and I see them going a very, very long way. Um, Sol Ruka, I'm glad to see her back from injury. She's like She looks as good as ever, to be honest with you. And Lola Vice also still on a roll. Uh, she's had a great 2024 so far. So let's see how this match turns out, shall we? Um, it comes to a head here. Where Sol Ruka is on top, to be honest with you, except she gets thrown off the top rope by Blair Davenport. She's about to hit a finishing move. I can't even remember what uh, Sol Ruka's finishing move is, to be honest with you, but she's about to hit it regardless. Um, Blair Davenport knocks her off the top rope, and this leaves her vulnerable to Lola Vice's. It's kind of like a black mask kick, isn't it? It's like, like, like a Latina heat kick. I don't know what she calls it. Anyway, she gets the 1 2 3 victory. Um, after this, Natalia comes on the Titan Tron and says, you know, you cost me, Lola, a NXT championship match last week, a championship that I've never held in WWE. So next week, it's going to be a match between me and you on your home turf. We're going to go NXT 
Underground. And that's the first women's underground match in NXT history. So that's going to be cool to see. I'm down for seeing Natalia versus Lola Vice. I think that's an interesting little dynamic. I mean, Natalia's whole thing is submission specialist, trained in the heart dungeon. And then Lola Vice, obviously with the MMA Bellator background that she's got, it's going to be interesting to see like how far they take that match. I hope they give it a solid like 15, 20 minutes. Because uh, like I say, I really think those two could really produce some great wrestling <laughs> i didn't know what word to say then for some reason um we go backstage now to where um ariana grace oh wait it's not really backstage it's more of like an outside area um ariana grace is talking to Gigi dolan saying that you know they're going to basically glam her up that Gigi dolan has to do what she says uh, but she's going to make her a better person georgina or Gigi, um is a little bit reluctant but you know she says let's get this over with so them two go dress shopping <laughs> We, we go into the shop uh, later on in the evening. I might as well talk about it now because it's all pretty much the same segment. We go into the stress shop. Uh, Ariana Grace is picking out some um, clothes and jewellery for Gigi Dolan to wear. Obviously, Gigi is having none of it. She doesn't like any of it, to be fair. And then Ariana Grace spots a dress for Gigi to wear. Um, Gigi is not very happy because it's not a black dress, which she suggested earlier on in this segment. Uh, but Ariana Grace was having nothing of this. So she grabs this dress for Gigi. She uh, tells her to go into the changing room. Gigi has a good idea. She says, I'm going to make it my own. She goes in. She's in there for a while. And Ariana Grace is like, oh, uh, you know, uh, are we nearly done? Like, are you, Is everything okay in there? She comes out. And it turns out she had some scissors. And she's kind of made the dress her own. Like, she's she's made it kind of like the Gigi Dolan kind of vibe of the dress. Ariana Grace kind of looks a little bit shocked and not very happy. Um, but, you know, at least she's wearing a dress, Ariana. So, you know, take take small victories. Um, Gigi Dolan turns around to the people that are working in the clothes shop and says, you know, she's paying. Ariana Grace says, do you take credit? Like, she doesn't look very happy that she's having to pay for this mangled, well, in her mind, her mangled dress. <laughs> um, next, we get a match between Joaquin Wilde and Ridge Holland. Now, this match is... Um, going on because of what happened last week when it seemingly was accidental but Ridge Holland accidentally tra um, trapped uh, uh, Cruz del Toro's hand or arm in the door and slammed it as he was going out. Cruz del Toro does not have very much luck because I believe the same thing happens later on the night with Obafemi. <laughs> we turn and he sees that his, his leg stuck in the door. I don't know how that happened because like the, the, the door was so thin or like the, the you know the entrance of the door was so like small that Obafemi went through. I don't know how Cruz del Toro was stood there, and at the same time, uh, Obafemi, who is an enormous guy, walked through and slammed the door onto Cruz del Toro's leg. I I, I don't I don't know how this happened to be honest. And um, but let's back, go back to the match: Rich Holland versus uh, Joaquin Wild. Joaquin Wild for me is one of my favorite people on the roster at the moment. Like he's really killing it. To be fair, like, he's he's doing a really good job. Like he's having solid tag team matches and he's having solid singles matches um on live shows i've heard so fair play um this match comes to a head where joaquin wild goes for a it looks like a sunset plunger um to the outside of the ring uh rich holland catches him and hits a devastating slam onto the floor which just looks absolutely brutal this is um like sort of like the narrative that rich holland is like going off the deep end and he's hurting people again which i'm kind of getting bored of to be honest with you um there is an interesting part however where sean spears is looking on and smiling about what's going on in this match um it looks like we're probably going to be getting like a tag team or something between rich holland and sean spears in the future i don't know if that's related to the wyatt family or like the white six uh uncle howdy stuff that's going on on raw and smackdown but it looks like Sean Spears is on the bit of the darker side and he's trying to tempt Rich Holland to go over there with him. Uh, Rich Holland obviously gets the one, two, three here. So um, I, th I think this is necessary for, um, for for Rich Holland's, you know, story to continue. I'm just not a big fan of it. I don't really care. I mean, like, the, the, re the reason why is the whole point of wrestling is to, like, you know, beat your opponent down for the victory. And then Rich Holland... He's kind of like, you know, I don't want to hurt people. And it's like, well, you're in the wrong industry then, aren't you, Mr. Rich? So, yeah. We go backstage to where um, Josh Briggs is getting his ribs checked out. Apparently, after the match at Standard Deliver, yeah, both of uh, two of his ribs were broken. Um, Ivar asks if he's okay. And he says, yeah. Um, Ivar says to him, you know, take a couple of weeks off and then go back against Oberfemi to challenge for the North American Championship. While you're having that time off, I'm going to go after Oberfemi, possibly, hopefully take the championship from him. And then it's going to be me and you. And Josh Briggs isn't having any of that. He turns around and says, no, go back to Mother Night Raw and get your ass beaten by Sheamus again. 
Um, he says, put on your war makeup, put on your ring gear and meet me in that ring tonight. So it's going to be Josh Briggs versus Ivar. I'm assuming whoever wins this match is going to be challenging Obafemi at NXT Spring Breaking. Um, next, we go to where Brinley is on TikTok. Brinley Reese is on TikTok with Idris Anofi and Malik Blade. Um, they're working out in the NXT Performance Center saying, um, Brinley says, we're going to beat Ope um, tonight. We're going to we're gonna uh, destroy Ope tonight. And like Idris and, Idris and uh, Malik are like, who's Ope? Who is that? And that, uh, do you mean AOP? AOP and Brinley's like, oh, I, di I didn't, I didn't know that he said it like that. <laughs> um, I thought that was quite funny. To be fair, I, I actually am a quite a big fan of this pairing now. I wasn't at the start, but I quite like the fact that it's. Um, how, how do I say? It? I, quite, I quite like the fact that they're not taking themselves very seriously. Um, I don't know why my notes are talking to me. But let's just uh, turn that off. That that was a little bit. I, I think I think my notes are like, yo, don't don't forget to talk about the fact that <laughs> Brinley Reese um starts like pushing the weights down onto Idris, um, trying to make it harder for him. And he's like, we don't need your bad juju out there when we face AOP tonight. And uh, Brinley Reese kind of takes defense to this, and she's a little bit sad. But um, we'll find out how they do later on tonight against AOP. We stay backstage now. Um, to where Chase Andre Chase is having a conversation with Thea Hale and explaining why he did what he did and the you know the things that um, Thea found out last week where JC Jane told Thea Hale that it was her fault that Chase University was in debt because when uh, Andre Chase threw in the towel that made him lose a huge bet that he put on Thea to win the NXT Women's Championship. Uh, Thea says, "Was it true?" And he says, "Yeah, um, I, I was I, I was high into my gambling um, last year and I actually had quite a good control over it." Um, but when the opportunity came to put a bet for or against you for the NXT Women's Championship, I put it all on you to win. But seeing you in that ring, like hurting, tears coming down your face, like getting injured, I just couldn't take it through it. So I threw in the towel. Thea Hale's like, why didn't you tell me any of this? I treated you like absolute crap. And he's like, because I thought one day that you would, you know, you would come around and like you would, you would, you would see um, that I just wanted you to be okay. And then wholesome moment. Thea Hale hugs Andre Chase. Andre Chase and Chase U, Thea Hale are all back on the same page. I am absolutely buzzing for this. I thought at first they were going to break up. I don't want Chase U to break up. I want him to go to the main roster, goddammit. Please don't take Chase U away from me. Um, what do we get next? Oh, we get the Tony D'Angelo family segment. Uh, Tony D'Angelo comes out to the ring and says, you know, we lost on um, at Stand and Deliver. It is what it is. I, I fought the, one of the most toughest people in my life um, in Ilya Dragon. I went toe-to-toe -to -toe, um, and, you know, it lost. But I think about this time last year and I was facing some, like, you know, high charges. Me and Stax uh, were going through it. Do you remember last year when uh, Gallus, uh, that whole thing with Gallus was going on and Tony D was locked up and, you know, Stax became the underboss, etc. Yeah, he's talking about that. Um he says, you look at my consigliere and look at my underboss, like Luca Crucifino and Tony Channing Stax Lorenzo. Uh, they're going to go after the NXT Tag Team Championships and add some gold to the family. Uh, before he can say anything else, like he, do he does talk about our Adriana Rizzo and says, you know, when she's ready, she's going to take over the women's division. But before he can say anything else, he's interrupted by the No Quarter Catch crew. Charlie Dempsey, Damon Kemp and Miles Bourne. No Drew Gulak. Obviously, something went... I'm not actually 100% sure what actually went on with Drew Gulak, uh, but he, I don't think he's in the company anymore or he's been suspended. I don't I don't really know. But I find it interesting that they're making it a part of storyline that the NQCC apparently asked the D'Angelo family to get rid of Gulak. Uh, they come out and say, you know, we, we don't appreciate you airing the business, even though they, they didn't actually talk about the NQCC. The family did not. So I thought this was a bit weird. Uh, Tony D says, hey, hey, no details. People are watching, you know, like... This ain't happening here. Like, we can have a conversation somewhere else. Like, you owe us money. You owe the Tony D'Angelo family some money. And uh, Damon Kemp go, uh, goes to speak. Tony tells him to shut up that no one was talking to him. Dempsey says, you know, I thought you were just doing this for the love of the business. I, I thought, you know, like, you know, I didn't know we had to pay you. Um, and Tony D says, well, you do. Uh, you owe us money. And you know what I owe the Tony D'Angelo family money. And then he looks at the Heritage Cup and says, you know, the Heritage Cup is looking pretty nice. Um... Uh, not Denny, Damon Kemp. Um, I always get these two mixed up. Like they're just the names, they all sound so generic. Charlie Dempsey turns around and says, "Hey, keep your eyes on me. I'm not that Heritage Cup. That is not for scumbags like you, two-bit thieves like you." This riles up the D'Angelo family, and it all starts kicking off. A brawl ensues, and the D'Angelo family manage to kick um, 
uh, the, the NQCC out of the ring. Uh, we then go to a break, which was kind of just like all out of nowhere, to be honest with you. Like, it kind of just happened, and then we come back, and then there's a match about to start. Ilya Dragunov is in the ring, and we're going to find out who his opponent is. The whole NXT locker room run down the ramp and try and get in the ring. The first one to look Ilya Dragunov in the eye gets the match. However, there is someone a little bit smarter than the rest of the locker room. Javon Evans jumps on the announce table, jumps into the ring, and looks Ilya Dragunov in the eye. So it is Ilya Dragunov versus the upstart, the 19-year-old Javon Evans. The guy who likes to bounce, baby. Um, this match was unbelievable. Uh, like, oh, oh, it really was unbelievable. Javon Evans has got a future in this business. He was able to hang with Ilya Dragunov. Ilya Dragunov was not able to put him away. He was hitting lariats. He was hitting power bombs. He was hitting the Constantine special. Nothing was keeping Javon Evans down. Um, there was a amazing moment here where Ilya Dragunov had to just like go out the ring and like kind of recover because he was uh, he got hit with a nasty DDT from Javon Evans. Javon Evans hits like a tope suicida onto Ilya Dragunov and it looks like Javon Evans is about to put it away where it, it, it looks like he's about to put the NXT championship uh, NXT champion down for the count baby um but Ilya Dragunov manages to get the upper hand again taps into that rage that we all know that he's got and he hits the torpedo Moscow for the one two three he then picks up Javon after the match and shakes his hand you know to give his respect to Javon so wow like wow I, 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 I don't know what else to say about this match it was absolutely unbelievable um it was really good I, <laughs> It, it was so good. It was a solid match. I wasn't expecting anything of it. I wasn't expecting it to be like maybe like a three minute squash. But fair play to Evans, like coming out and having a really, really good match with Ilya Dragunov. Um, I see a lot in the future of Evans. He moves like a star. He looks like a star. So that is someone to keep an eye on in NXT. We now go backstage to where um, Carmen Petrovic is being interviewed, saying that she's going to be in Natty's corner for NXT Underground and she's going to be the sparring partner to train for NXT Underground. Uh, she's interrupted by Lola Vi saying, you know, it doesn't matter who Natty spars with, she can't keep up with this Latino heat. Uh, or Latina Heat, should I say. Um, and next week, she's going to get destroyed, basically. And she has a surprise of her own. She has someone in her corner. So I'll have to wait and find out who that is going to be. Um, I I'm honestly not sure who it's going to be, to be honest with you. Like, I, I can't even I can't even think about who that who it's going to be. I'm not going to lie. Um, I suppose we'll just have to wait and find out. Uh, now we get a Tatum Paxley versus Thea Hale match. And there's not really much to say about what happened in the ring here. Um, it's a bit of a short match. It's more what happens after the match. Um, during this match, uh, Jasmine Nix and JC Jane sort of um, distract Thea Hale for Tatum Paxley to get the one, two, three. After this, while Thea Hale is brawling on the outside with JC Jane and Jasmine Nix, Lyra Valkyria jumps Tatum Paxley in the ring and them two start fighting. We then cut backstage to where um, Ava Rain eventually makes a triple threat match for NXT Spring Breaking. Uh, Tatum Paxley versus Lyra Valkyria versus Roxanne Perez for the NXT Women's Championship. Um, Roxanne Perez is not very happy about this. He says, I get it. You're against me just like everyone else. Um, and... You know, she storms off, basically. Uh, I'm looking forward to that triple threat. Not going to lie. Um, I'm really am looking forward to it. There's some solid people in there. Um, it, Roxanne Perez, as much as I'm not a big fan of her, she does have great chemistry with Lyra Valkyria. Lyra Valkyria is absolutely solid in that ring. And Tatum Paxley isn't bad herself. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that match. We now get um, AOP versus Idris Anofi and Malik Blade. Um, Malik and Anofi try and put up a fight, but this is just a one-way steam train in this match, to be quite honest with you. AOP dominate most of this match. Um, there's a moment in this uh, match where um, I believe it's Malik Blade goes for a, a tope to the outside, and he gets caught by Akam. And as um, uh, Idris Anofi goes uh, for like a similar move to try and help his partner out, they use um, Malik as like a battering ram as he's coming out just to absolutely destroy both of them at the same time. AOP get him in the ring and hit the super collider onto Idris Nofi and Malik Blade for the 1-2-3. Um, I don't really know um, if the final testament are going to be going after those NXT Tag Team Championships. It looks like it because Axiom and Nathan Fraser then came out a little bit 
um, after this match um, because obviously they get, uh, got jumped last week by AOP. So that looks like a match that we're going to be getting in the future. But if it's going to be for the Tag Team Champions, I don't know. I don't know if I want the final testament on NXT, to be honest. I mean, I kind of want them on the main roster. Um, they're a brand new faction. I think we should give them a chance. But, you know, that's just my opinion. The draft's coming up. Let's see if the final testament end up on NXT. Like, the only time will tell. Um, what do we have next? Oh, we get Ivar versus Josh Briggs. A match which, again, is just hard-hitting. It doesn't last very long, but it's hard-hitting. And it gets all the stuff that we want in this match. Just two big, meaty men slapping meat. Um, Josh Briggs with the hurt ribs is at a disadvantage, but he tries to hulk up at the end, but it just isn't to be. He tries to get um, Ivar in a powerbomb on the outside of the ring, but he can't lift him up because of the ribs. Ivar pushes him into the steps, and he slams right into the steps. His shoulder and his ribs go into the steps. He gets uh, Briggs back into the ring for the doom salt. One, two, three. It's over. Ivar looks to be challenging Obafemi for the North American Championship at some point for spring breaking. It's a two-week affair, as we know. So that match is going to be really cool. I can't wait to see Ivar challenging for a championship. He really has been doing solid work on the main roster. So I would, I would quite like to see a little bit of a run, maybe, in NXT for Ivar. If that is with the North American Championship or not, I don't know. But... Like I said, it's going to be a solid match. He is absolutely incredible in the ring. Obafemi can handle his own as well. He's been improving um, match by match. So it's going to be interesting to see how these two do. Are they going to have good chemistry? Or is it just going to be like a, just a bit of a slog? Who's to say? Um, what do we have next, guys? Um, we have um, Trick Williams versus Carmelo Hayes. And look, I don't, I, I don't know how to say this. I didn't enjoy this match. And I'm not really sure why. Um, I was talking about this on the Stand and Deliver live um, when we did it with me and Ross on the Outcasted um, channel. I was really disappointed with the match that they had at Stand and Deliver. And to be honest, I was quite disappointed in the match that they had here in the Steel Cage. I don't know if these two have the best chemistry together. Like, the great as a tag team. The great on the mics together. But these two just don't put on... Like, I mean, they're not crap matches. They're not bad matches. They just don't put on very exciting matches. They don't put Johnny Gargano versus Tommaso Ciampa matches on, if that makes sense. Um, so, I, I, I don't really know what to say. Um, in this match, um, obviously, you've got Carmelo's security team on the outside. They constantly try and get involved. They do hand Carmelo Hayes a weapon halfway through this match, and he uses it on Trick Williams. Um this match comes to an end, however, where Carmelo Hayes is in trouble, but all of his security team are trying to get in the ring. Trick Williams is trying to fend him off. He ends up uh, fending him off, fortunately, but he does get hit by Carmelo Hayes. Um, he gets hit from behind. Carmelo Hayes picks up a chair that is in the ring. He goes to hit um, Trick Williams with it, but Trick is fortunately able to hit that flash knee, that... Um, what that trick knee i don't know what he calls it he calls it the something knee um for the one two three and he beats carmelo hayes for the second time now this makes sense because obviously carmelo hayes is technically on smackdown i don't know if he is anymore i don't know if they cancelled that so they can do it again in the draft um but it makes sense it makes sense because it looks like trick williams is probably going to be winning the nxt championship next week against Ilya dragunov because as we know Ilya dragunov is also on the draft in a couple of weeks so i'm assuming Ilya dragunov is being moved up um, apparently, um, Roxanne Perez is also on the draft. She wanted to be on the draft. Um, so it might be likely that she's going to be losing the NXT Women's Championship match next week. And as I say, it doesn't make uh, sense for Carmelo Hayes to go over against Trick Williams, a guy who's going to be staying in NXT, a guy who is your future NXT champion. So it makes sense to put him over as you leave NXT. So fair play. But like I said, not the most solid match. I, I feel like it could have been better, but it is what it is, I suppose. We had some great matches this week. Shout out to Dijak versus Noam Dar. Probably my match of the night. Absolutely fantastic. But what did you guys think of NXT? Let me know in the comments. And did you agree what I said about Carmelo Hayes versus Trick Williams? Was you excited about this match or was you a little bit disappointed like me? Make sure you put all that stuff in the comments. Um, guys, if you want to check out more of our content, we are everywhere. We are on Instagram. We are on um, X slash Twitter. We are on TikTok at Outcasted OC. And obviously, all of our individual channels will be in the description down below and um, if you enjoy this video make sure you hit subscribe and hit that thumbs up maybe knock on that bell so you never miss a outcasted oc video thank you so much for the support for the past couple of weeks heading out of wrestlemania weekend um, and heading into the new era of wwe but for now i hope you enjoy this video 
Go check out Courtney's review of Monday Night Raw that came out yesterday. Stay tuned for the podcast tomorrow where we're going to be doing a quiz with all four of us um, answering each other's questions. That's going to be an interesting one. And make sure you stay tuned for Saturday morning because we're going to be getting the SmackDown review from either G or Ross. But for now, guys, I hope you have an absolutely amazing Thursday. Enjoy the rest of your week. Peace out. Oh, wait, it's Wednesday. Peace out. (laughs) 